Okay, so in this question here, um, what we have is almost the reverse of our multiplication of logs. So what we're going to try to do is we're actually going to go backwards from this, and we're going to try to turn it into that. Okay. The other thing I want you to notice is because it's set equal to 1, we're going to put it almost like it's in logarithmic form. 1 is going to be our y value. Okay, but the first thing we're going to do is actually put it into our multiplicative rule. So with our multiplicative rule, if we look at this question, it says that if the logs are the same, we can simplify. So we know the base of both of these is the same. So we can simplify the log base 7, and we're going to multiply the two brackets by each other because that's our m. This is our m value, and we're going to say this is our n value. Okay, Just like in here, here's our n. So technically using the second form, we're going to bring it to the first form. So we're going to multiply the x plus 1, which would be our m in this equation, and we're going to multiply it by our n, which is x minus 5, and that's our n in this equation. Now, and most te and technically, because we are relating this to our logarithmic form, I'm just going to bring that little picture down here, our y value in this one, is technically 1, so we're going to set it equal to 1, okay? So, now that we have that, we're going to have to FOIL. So we have our log 7 x squared uh, minus 5x plus x minus 5 is equal to 1, okay? I can simplify log 7 x squared minus 4x minus 5 is equal to 1. Um, now, when we go to take a look at this, let's see if we can't move it into another form here. So we have our log a. Let me just quickly think about this. So what we're going to do now, because they want us to solve for this question, is we're going to relate the two, exponential form and log form. Okay. Right now we're in log form, so our, our x can actually go to one side of the equation. So we're going to move all of this to one side of the equation. So we have x squared minus 4x minus 5 is equal to, and if you take a look, I'm just going to, I guess we'll underline them just to make sure we can see the where each goes. This is our a, our x, and we've already put our x over on the other side, and our y value, which is important too. Our y value becomes the exponent. So we're going to actually move the base up in this question, which our base was 7, and our y value, which is now becomes our exponent. So what we've done is moved out of log function into exponential. Does that make sense so far? So when we moved into exponential, I'm going to drag it in here just so we can see it. Okay, we moved it into our exponential form. Now that we've done that, we can set this up like a quadratic. Okay, so we're going to Set this up like a quadratic. I could drop the brackets. I have x squared minus 4x minus 5 is equal to 7. I move 7 to the other side. x squared minus 4x negative 5 minus 7 is negative 12 is equal to 0. Now I can factor to essentially solve for my options. Um, 1 and 1, 1, 12, 2 and 6, 3 and 4, and we know their products. 4x, I can move those x's out nice. Um, because one of them is going to have to be negative, I'll tell you really quickly, we're probably looking for 6 and 2, because that's going to give us 2x, 6x, and if 6 is negative, that will give us our 4x. So when we go to factor it, we have x as our first term in each bracket, okay, that's still equal to 0, and we have positive 2 in one and negative 6 in the other. And we solve for our two x values. x um, is equal to negative 2. Does that make sense quickly? Okay. And the other one is x is equal to positive 6. So our two options in this would x would be negative 2 or x would be positive 6 in our equation. Uh, we can probably go back and relate it if we wanted to. We could plug them in to solve and we'd probably be able to get as a checking our right answer there. So we wanted to check a rule. We're not 100% we're sure if we could just drop, um, because this is both base 1, right? We wanted to see if we could just drop the logs off and end up like this. 
Well, another thing I can do is I have my division of logs, so I can use that rule. What I'm going to do is I'm going to move log 9 to the other side of the equation. So I end up with log 2x squared minus x minus 1 is equal to, oh, it's x, minus log 9 is equal to 0. Now, let's also write down what we're hoping will happen. We were hoping, and I'll put it in the red just above, that the logs will cancel each other. We're trying to prove that if we drop the logs, this will end up staying true. 2x squared minus x minus 1 will equal 9. Okay? We're going to prove it using our division of logs. So we've done that now. Um, according to our division of logs rule, we take our m and our n, and we can put it into one logarithmic function and divide the two. Okay? So we end up with log 2x squared minus x minus 1 divided by 9 is equal to 0. Correct? Yes. Okay. Now we're gonna what we're gonna do is we're gonna move from logarithmic function into exponential form. Okay? And we'll just underline the two so we can see where each of them meet. Our x will end up on the other side of the equation. Our base will end up as the base of our exponent and the other side of our function will become the power of our base. So we'll end up with our x is going to go on this side 2x squared minus x minus 1 divided by 9 Okay, that was our logarithmic function is equal to, um, this is technically to the base of 1, correct? So we have base 1 and our exponent is 0. Well anything to the exponent 0 is going to give us, what is it? going to give us power of 1. So we get 2x squared minus x minus 1 divided by 9. Now to move 9 to the other side of the equation to get rid of this fraction, I have to multiply by 9, correct? So I end up at 9 is equal to 2x squared minus x minus 1. And if we just view entire page for a second, we'll see that we've proven this by going through a division rule. Our 2x minus x minus 1 is equal to 9 is exactly what we found. 2x minus 1 minus 2x squared minus x minus 1 is equal to 9. So we proved it using our division log. So from there, we're going to use our quadratics to solve the x. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. As another note, when we get our negative answers, because we are using quadratics, when we go to plug our negatives into the logs, we're going to end up with negative 2 plus 1, which will give me negative 1 or negative 2 minus 5, which gives me negative 7. And we're going to put those in our calculators. We can't actually work those out. So we know that our negative answers are not options. So our option for the first one was 6, um, because our negative 2 is no good. Um, we didn't put the answer up here, but we're not. our negative options are not working. The best way to check is to plug those numbers back into the log original function to see if we get a negative log. Quickly, now that we gotta use, we gotta change from logarithmic form into our exponential form. So let's. Um, what's the key thing here is pretty much defining what our things are. If this is our x, this is our x. Okay, and we're referring it back to the equation. Um, we'll call this our a. This is our a. This is our a. And finally, y is is three. So we were in originally in logarithmic form, and we need to move into this form here. So our x actually goes from being here to the other side of the equation. So we get 2x minus 1, and that is going to be equal to um, a, which is the base of our function, which is 5, to the power of 3. That's going to be 125, I think. So we get 2x minus 1 is 1. Five. Move the one over. We get two x is equal to one twenty. Oops. One twenty six. And then when we divide it, x is equal to sixty three. I think that's what they're looking for. All right. In this question here, what we need to prove here um, wasn't base one, but.
base 10. Still worked out fine because the uh, 10 was to the exponent of 0. So let's uh, fix that up. It became 0, 10 to the power of 0, which was still 1. It worked out completely fine. But yeah, you're right. When there's no base, we assume. Um, this is our division rule for logs, right? What you learned straight away. So we have log base 10, uh, x plus 9 divided by x. Now I can't quite simplify that because of the addition up top. is equal to 1. I can switch into my exponential form, which means this will become x plus 9 over x is equal to our base is 10 to the power of 1. So I get x plus 9 divided by x is equal to 10. Now, I'm going to move x to the other side of the equation, which means I'll have to multiply. So I get x plus 9 is equal to 10x. And I'll move my x to the other side. 9 is equal to 10x minus x. Yeah, so you get 9x equals 9. x is equal to 1. 